Cause all I ever have Redemption songs all right, so the city title of the video, so you know what I am about to talk about. I have I have opinions about the Bob Marley One Love movie. I've seen all the conversations happening online. Y'all are waiting for it, and I have all of the information to give to you. Now let's get into my One Love movie review. Let's go. Box cover. Box cover, hey guys, I am Dottie Berry and welcome to the Dottie Berry Show YouTube channel, home of the best pop culture reviews to keep you entertained and informed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, no, I am talking all about the Bob Marley One Love movie. Now, it premiered internationally on Valentine's Day, that's the 14th of February, and the anticipation was very high. Now, even though only the same at the movie premiere, I did not really get to watch the movie then, Mokoda I never even get access to the red carpet and all of these things so i had to wait like everyone else and i have no problem because once is brand jamaica i am going to be there representing so i've seen all of the commotion on social media a lot of people have been trashing the movie there have been several conversations about why did a non-jamaican get the role of uh, bob marley so many conversations were happening online pan twitter pan tiktok all over some of them just nonsense some crap and I needed to have a space to just vent about it, but I'm not going to do so yet. Let's get into uh, the movie, what I thought of it, and my review. So uh, I went to to watch the movie a couple of days ago. I'm going to watch it over the cinema in a, um, Portmore. First time going over there. It was nice, you know, nice and clean and everything. And I was like, okay, cool, big up Portmore having them, uh, them cinema. So I watched the movie. I did have an idea of what to expect. Because I've been following up the 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 um the pre-interviews and trying to familiarize myself with what would the movie be centered around, right? So I watch the movie and I'm just like, first thing, you only pa uno uno o Kingsley Ben Adair an apology. Lot of mercy. I wonder if I'm related to Nina and Shanzi. Now them are the Adairs. I wonder if Kingsley related to Jesus. Probably gonna do maths. I'm gonna do a little family tree right there. So, but Kingsley Ben Adair, he deserves an apology from Wally Pa Uno. Uno open up in the mouth and then talk about this actor. And I've no idea like what he's capable of and what he will be bringing to the table. No, the minute I heard that he was announced, the Marley family announced that Kingsley Ben Adair was gonna take on the role of Bob Marley, I immediately took. To, to, to Google to go do some research because you're like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're not going to give this brother this movie role if he did not fully epitomize the essence of Bob Marley if he didn't put him foot into this role and came home with 10 out of 10s don't worry about that <laughs> don't worry <laughs> about that thing <laughs> Every little thing <laughs> gonna be alright. You like that one? So let me just go and tell you about Kingsley Benadir. So he is a British actor. And um if you don't know anything about the British actors, them them don't now mal. They are known for transforming into roles. They are known for just like leaving a shell of themselves and fully embracing and becoming a character. But I was just like, hmm, forgot to take on this Bob Marley role. Is a different type of anger bangling that it's going to require for you to master the role of um, Bob Marley and to do the Patois uh, accent that is going to require for you, for, you, for you to go and dig deep. And so watching this movie and to see what Kingsley did with the character and to really humanize Bob and to bring emotions, I was just like, wow. I'm not going to put nothing against them British actors here ever Again. I'm a wire and, I, and it took me a while to get out of my head. That's because I know, I've grown up with Jamaicans. I know how much Bob means to people around the world. As much as it scared me, it excited me. Mm. But I just wanted to make sure the family knew and everyone knew that I can't sing, can't dance, don't look like him. And we've got a lot of work to do. As long as they, were, as long as they understood that I'm not going to come and try and mimic Bob because you can't mimic him. Yeah. 
once I knew that everyone knew that I was fine, I was just like, we just got a lot of work to do. So there was there was apprehension, but it was mainly excitement and honor when the family, when Ziggy said to me, yeah, man, yeah, man, we want you to do it. It's like, okay. And so, as I mentioned earlier, like this brother, from my research, he's known for taking on characters. You know, just like oh, you have the Johnny Depp them, you have the Meryl Streep who 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 can who can really bring life to just like human beings. That is what Kingsley has done in all of his previous work. So he's played the role of Malcolm X already um, in One Night in Miami. It's nice, ain't it, Malcolm? Yeah, it's most definitely soothing, Cass. He has played the role of uh, former president of the United States, Barack Obama. You garnered a lot of attention for uh, taking on the mob as prosecutor. And he's been a he's been a colonel in um, was it Peaky Blinders? Carl, these days there are some very stupid people saying some very stupid things. Uh, he was even in the Barbie movie playing like a. Dixie type of surfer dude. Ken, I got us both like Hi, Hi Barbie. And no, he was selected for the role of Bob Marley, and he did an amazing job. Like round of applause for Kingsley. Like he actually exceeded my expectations. Because when me jump in there in a minute, I say, well, let me just go support Brand Jamaica because maybe if him come in and him sound like you know them little touristy type of people that work at the hotel them where have to deal with the foreigners them. Yeah man, Irie man, welcome to Jamaica man. Feel Irie, feel good. That type of Jamaican, the cool running type of accent. We were just wondering if you'd be interested in coaching the first Jamaican bobsled team. Mm -hmm. That is what I was expecting, but Kingsley said no. Kingsley said no and he did a brilliant job. Like his portrayal, if you don't know, in a Bob Marley is like, was like 5'6". King's name was about 6'2", six 6'3". Six and so, I didn't even know that, but it actually made perfect sense because when we think of Bob Marley, we already see Bob Marley as larger than life. So even him walking in with that type of statue, it just made sense to me. He did an incredible job with the accent um, in terms of the look. All of these things were good. He actually looked like Bob Marley. And one of the critiques them immediately have made that one the body here. But whenever I know say I saw Bob, um, whenever they remember say I saw Bob Marley dreads them, they so thick. It did yeah, man, it did thick. And if they like the little pretty boy Rastafari locks where around the place nowadays. Bob Marley did have the the the, the, the um the authentic Eile Selassie type of hair. And so um I like that. No, I'm gonna talk about Rita Marley, um, played by uh Lashana. No ugh, God. To get a character, we don't really know not much about Rita. And I kind of really see Rita, don't know, back at interviews and all of these things. But what Lashana was, what was able to do is to bring the emotion. And I guess based off just connecting with her own femininity and imagining what it would have been like to, to really be the backbone to Bob Marley, I really liked what Lashana was able to do with the character and, and allow us to really humanize her, to really feel the emotions um, of, of, of Rita. And she did that beautifully. I thought she did a good job with the accent as well. When you write that? All my life. And I'm, I'm now finding out that Faye Ellington, the Faye Ellington was the dialect, dialect coach for the movie. So that is just all good and dandy for me. But Lashana, she good. I never know that so she's her own little mama, heavy. Because if you don't watch the movie, yeah man, Lashana walk with her own engine. She have her own swinging engine around her. Oh Lord. Um the um the other actors like I I, I like the supporting crew. Big up Everaldo Creary for playing the role of um Jesus Pim. Why am I forgetting the name right now? Wait my name again we always in a little colour colour stuff them on Jesus Pim. Why may I forget him now? Only leave a comment down below because I don't know what movie and I can't only can't remind me. So um the name is Lee Scratch Perry. Yes, that is a character that Ervaldo Creary played. Um famed record producer Lee Scratch Perry. Also of note, I have to go and you know um, mention that Sheldon Shepard was in the movie. No, he is just like one of the baddest, brightest Jamaican actors um that we've seen lately. And he was featured in the movie playing the character Neville Garrick, who is Bob Marley's um record Bob Marley's graphic designer I mean 
okay, what else about the movie? I definitely did like the supporting cast. Like, you know, you had Naomi Cohen as Marcia Griffiths. You had uh, Savannah as Judy Mowat. I love the, the Wheelers band. Like, the, all of them, I felt like they really represented and really were a good supporting cast to uh, Kingsley. Um, what was very interesting is that um, you never really saw much of Cindy Breakspear character. Like, you did see little glimpses of her, um, like a two-second glimpse of her winning the Miss World crown, but you never really see no talking lines in the movie. You just see her kind of hang around Bob Marley uh, in the background. And so, mm, mm, mm. I would have loved to see a little bit more of that character. I have to give a special commendation. Me can't leave out. A special big up to the young Bob Marley. The gentleman who played the young Bob Marley, like, um, he's a, he's an artist, he's a first time actor, and I felt that he really had the, the joy and the wonder and the hopefulness. He really captured that the brother of the big bright item and just his, his role, um, it, it, it felt very sincere and authentic to how a Bob that was just like so, um, eager to make his claim in the music industry. I felt like he did a great job. Um, also, the girl who played young Rita, just like amazing, amazing job. Yeah, man, this youth by the name of Kwanda Jai, I hope I'm pronouncing his name um, um, properly. I really hope so I'm seeing him in more films. Like, he really did a good job. And you know what's so funny? The, 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 the little kid who played young Bob Marley, I had the pleasure of interviewing um, some months ago and he revealed to me in the middle of the interview that he actually was going to be in the movie playing young Bob so it was very nice to see him um, on screen I can't believe you're going to be in a movie is yeah. it that what is the, the the character that you're going to be playing young Bob no mm -mm. no nope 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 all right now so now to what I rate the movie I give the movie a solid 7.5 I think the movie was good I think the movie told a story um, what allowed me to give it a 7.5 was the fact that going into the movie, I did do some research. So I know that the movie was really going to be focused around a short period of his life, right? And I knew it was going to um, be centered around the creation of that album, um, you know, uh, Exodus, etc., etc. So um, I knew that we weren't going to get a lot of information, like probably when he might be like three years old or at the funeral and all of them, something there. So I was able to kind of gauge my expectations. Um, and so I did like it. I, I liked the movie for what it was. And so if you are going to see this movie, if you have some respect for reggae music, if you have a love for Bob Marley, this is the movie for you. However... And it's a big however. You see, if you're not really so brand Jamaica, I don't really know not much about Bob Marley and have no interest in a reggae and them something there, this movie could possibly be a snooze fest. Because let me just go and say this. This movie has a lot of symbolism. There's a scene where um, the young Bob Marley, the little young Bob Marley is running through the field. And then you see that with um, some imagery of his father, um, Selassie. All of these things might have flown over a lot of people's head. When a lot of the characters were introduced into the movie, you don't necessarily have no little notes for going to say, oh, this was, um, this was Bob and um, Sly and Robbie. And this was Muta Baruch and this was X person. You have to kind of know for you to fully kind of grasp everything and to follow along you'd have had to be you know um a fan and know enough of bob marley going into it for you to really leave with a strong appreciation for the film and so while i was there you know me hear some people are talking about it and some people in the band of me say boring and all kind of things and it's because i don't think they expected to get such an insight into the mind and the psyche of bob marley and rita marley and so what I know is that a lot of the Jamaican audience, we are used to seeing root plays, root, roots plays. We are used to watching film according to um, the Ray Ray and a lot of the more high-end type of entertainment value. So if well, this is somebody I get shot, or if this is something I, uh, I get boxed. So for many Jamaicans, if you're coming into this movie to see like a whole um type of show down and you want to get the nitty gritty of everything you might not see it in this film but you will really leave with a stronger connection to bob as an artist and as a human being behind the music and be more aware of the burdens that he would have had to face and also about recognizing how much of a strong and a supportive wife rita was 
even after their relationship would have progressed beyond just a romantic connection, she stood by him because he represented something that was bigger than just their, um, you know, um, relationship. It was no um, a movement. They were literally championing a cause that was going to last for generations. And so that is the sort of insight that as a fan of Bob Marley and as, an, um, as somebody who loves the culture, I walked away with a very deep appreciation. But for the rest of people, them know who you might go know. Yeah, expect for to see um, the Bob Marley character is in the Brick Spear backers and the two of them are thrown down for 30 minutes in a movie and suck out tongue and them something there. This might not be the film for you. But there was a little Kaylee side of me that wouldn't mind a little showdown with Bob Marley and Rita and Cindy with a buck up and one little box go go on and more a love for the whole of that go go on just for the little Ray Ray. But I understand that every film and every production it can't be about that. And at the end of the day, this movie is also being produced by Rita, by Ziggy Marley. It's the Marley Foundation. They are a part of it. So you have to remember that when the family is a part of it, they also are creating this thing to be like a documentary style and to really be a, a modern um, encyclopedia that can, I guess, like showcase and give insight into the brand Bob Marley. So they're not going to necessarily go paint him out to be too bad and all of them look at something there. So we have to just remember these things. If we don't want to see that type of film, it would have to come from somebody outside of the Bob Marley estate. I'm going to think they're going to give the permission for them to go use the Bob Marley name so because they're very protective of the Marley brand. And that is understandable, right? So I give the movie a 7.5. I did like it. Um, I would have loved to see a stronger ending. But for some reason, when people do these type of biopic style, it tends to end in that particular way. But I wouldn't mind if it's the big funeral and the war and the rear and all kind of things. But I did appreciate the movie and I did leave the movie um, having a, a, a more intimate understanding of what transpired back then coming if a band them time they suffer me that was valuable and i think that's the reason why they produced the movie and did it like that um but yeah man the whole um but did, let, what, what, what we can jump to know what i do like with the movie as well is that it did offer a lot of moments where um the entire all the people in attendance can sing along but there are some moments in the movie where some of the scenes them they are a little bit too long and could have cut out and I feel like you, you kind of lost momentum with some of those scenes. And so, the, yeah, that, that is where I couldn't get a movie the 10 out of 10. But here's the thing, what was interesting and why I think this film is important. When I was in the theater, a lot of people were even shocked that Bob Marley died before he was 40. They did not know that Bob Marley died in his 30s. And there was so much other information that I feel like a lot of us as Jamaicans just didn't know. All right, now, so I think it is time that we discuss and talk about the noise that was happening on social media. No, boy, oh boy, where do I even begin? I saw all of the commentary. I tried to stay stay pretty much silent and just to watch all the way I go on and then decide whether or not I didn't want to go, for go, for go intervene. But your boy had some thoughts. I definitely, oh, there's something I move so. I definitely had a lot of thoughts, right? And so the first thing that I want to go address is to, the people who were just cussing off Kingsley and why? Why him never go take up one of them them? Why didn't he go for a Jamaican? Why, why, why him never go for somebody else? Why the man, the man go sell out Bob Marley and go choose this British actor? First of all, you remember say Bob Marley half-white? Because sometimes the way you go on like say Bob Marley is the second coming of Sam Sharp and Marcus Garvey. No, big respects to Bob Marley, you know, but just also remember that this brother was very much like from him born, he was already multinational. Oh, we call it multinational. <laughs> the man did already international. He already had access to a privilege that most of us wouldn't have. So in terms of the reach and the scope that Bob Marley's music could have um, gotten to, you have to remember, say, it was also a little bit of because he had that connection to whiteness. And so the fact that there was a British man for me, it make perfect sense to represent a black um, a Bob Marley. Especially with the fact, say, a lot of Bob Marley's success came from over there. Because remember, over there, so the man did really got bust before Jamaica come to appreciate him, you know. So the whole of this, the whole, his entire selection was even symbolic to me. And then this conversation, like, it have to be a Jamaican. It just had to be a Jamaican. And I'm like, listen, 
if a lot of who understand how the industry works and realize it's not the same type of things when Una run Funu cook shop or Una set up Funu establishment, people make decisions um, differently because there are other things, other components, other factors to be measured, right? Um, and one of the first things is me I like, he is a seasoned actor. He's really good, right? And even the fact that his name is, uh, is actually at the point where it is being mentioned in, in international rooms, I know that would actually be, an, um, be a leg in for him to even get the role. Now, are there Jamaican talented actors, talented Jamaican actors? Of course! First in mind, me did have it say Sheldon Shepard would probably be up in other runnings. Up in other runnings there so, Right? But when I listened to an interview and Ziggy Marley spoke and say he wasn't looking for somebody to jump up and be and do an impression, an impersonation and try to be like them and mimic Bob Marley. He wanted somebody that was able to capture the human side and to really embody the emotions that he knows his father had. And I'm like, all right, that no. He might go look for something different. So it can't be that he just go up there and be like, one love, Irie, no. A different criteria they might look upon. And some hear people are talking about why not Spraga Benz, why not? When you realize that Bob Marley did want one young man. So when I suggest some people are like 50 and 60 year old and all kind of things. And then the question is, are some of these act options, them did available? Them said they didn't want it? Are they even actors? And are they even the most ideal persons for the role? And you have to remember like, this is also... So a decision that I forgot may be made by the casting people, them, by the Marley family, also for the producers, them Paramount. So even when it gets to that level, can this person handle the international circuit in terms of doing the promo, the interviews, all of these different factors help in the selection, right? And this just happens in all kind of industry, um, industry across the board. These other factors, on top of your talent, it does matter. Some people, when they decide for you to be an employee, is not because you're good at the job. They also go check your background. How do you communicate all of these things, your social media presence? Sometimes all of these are factors in the decision making. And it's going to be the case, especially for a humongous production like this Bob Marley One Love movie. And so, them type of something here really upset me, man, when people literally like just say some ignorant statements. And just like talk like this. And it's that type of mentality. I te feel it just completely just ma mash up Jamaica. Because every time our first instinct is that my dog them have to live. My dog them have to live. My dog them have to eat a food. My dog them have to live. But you don't stop and ask the question. Can you dog them even back? You dog them can go roof roof. When you go so for your opportunity. Can your dog actually move with alacrity and run to it? No! Sometimes a dog doesn't even know for fetch. Can your dog be a security? Can your dog be a guards man? No! But you just so quick because your dog has to go eat and go throw up two little bone just to say. And so I am of the viewpoint like if the ideal person was selected and once they have met that criteria... We can't just jump and say just because of somebody a Jamaican. Because if it were a Jamaican person, that person would have had to be better than the person who show up there. That is what I also agree. Especially when it comes down to things like that. You get me? Lashana was there. I'm hear so much smoke for Lashana. Lashana not born Jama of Jamaican either. Her parents are Jamaican. And she captured the role of Rita Marley. But I guess it's fine because Rita come from Cuba. Okay? But it's just that type of mentality, man. And I don't see all kind of things. I mean, like, this is an international movie. This is not third world cup. You can't just go pick a movie and go pick an actor now. And then the movie, when the movie don't go beyond, um, beyond Carib, then we complain and then we don't get other movies. Regardless of the fact, we should show up and support this movie. This movie is now the number one at the box office in America. People didn't even expect for it to be doing that well. Over 2,000 odd Jamaicans were employed on this production. I'm going to see all the people had shot some crap and I thought about Jamaicans weren't even employed in this movie. You know what, friend, me, you know what, part of this? And get good work. This is now a part of their credits. Them can move into institutions with just this history for say, I was a part of an international production such as this. And I them look at something that pissed me off, man, because someone who just don't want uh, step outside of the regular type of 
ways how you know, think that content and movies should be created. And everything must have a, one gunman scene and one shot in the face. And everything is supposed to have one whole entire in the in the room, ram, room, ram, right throat. So certain learn for just like you know, like develop an artistic palette. Come on, man. And if you don't know if you just expand, at least just humble yourself, man, and try if you appreciate something. But yeah, that's just my little TED talk, you know, come and fix both of them. I'm not even going to jump into the whole fact of the other conversation as it relates to the Rita versus Cindy and how people were just like jumping in at Cindy Breakspear because she was going to big up Bob. Like, I am very much pro Cindy. I'm pro Rita as well. Because I just realized that Bob Marley was a gallus. He was a gallus and what he was able to do is to just be very slick and sly and convince these women. And I think these women were just so enamored with him. And at the end of the day, this is somebody that everybody knew was a legend. He was a living legend. Like everyone around him knew that. And when you have such a light, it's naturally going to pull people to you. Right? And missing people, they might jump in and Cindy like say Cindy was the only matey. I know what's ironic. For your country, run down Shensia, um, side chick song and all kind of other little things and um and um tech girl man and bunny man them look at something there. All of a sudden, when it comes to Cindy and Rita, everybody know just so stush now. Nobody no give bun again, nobody know a champion matey. All of them look at something there. Everybody just button up now. And I believe it's so really and truly because Cindy is a is a is a quote unquote white man. You get me? Me think of them look at something and go on because she was the person who, you know, didn't want to just shy away. She's just like, yo, she had a romantic relationship. And when you watch the movie, you realize that Bob and Rita had a very complicated relationship. And I think Rita knew that this situation did move beyond regular romantic love. This was now a construct contractual business arrangement and I am going to be your keeper. She literally became like him, look a therapist who said, boy, yo boy, me know you're look you know, but when you're done, come back in you know, because we have business to attend to. We have the business at hand to go and attend to. That is what their relationship um, progressed to. So whilst Rita did go on one side and tired of Bob Marley and him cheating, she go go start to her fear own relationship. Bob at that time went and go run up and um, run up um, and, go, and, go, and go start for date. Cindy Breakspear, who was Miss, Miss World, she won the entire thing. Miss World 1970. A 76 or 77. Oh, memory has served me right. And they had their relationship. And, you know, and I'm pretty sure say it was a loving situation. So do we all people make it look like, say, when 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 Cindy come in, she just completely take away. Ah, that woman did done a take away, take away, um, <laughs> take away Bob from Rita. And if you go and look, I think somebody, thank God, somebody made this post. And I'm just like, Bob was really doing road. But Bob was really doing road and people only have heed for Cindy. But like, she's the only, she's the only baby mother. She really wasn't the only one. Let me see if we can find it. See picture here now. Bob Marley's family tree. And this is where it starts, right? So you have Imani Marley. The mother, their mother is um, Cheryl Murray. That was um that child um was born in 1963. Right? Me not think I'll know Rita reaching at the picture. Rita must go outside. She have her outside pit, you know, with name um Marley. What's she name? She named Sharon Marley. No, she was later adopted. No, Rita had her in 1964. Right? So right there and then. Bob got a film on a situation with the woman there. With the, with the, with the own woman there. Rita have fear on a situation. Then came the union now. Sidella Marley was born in 1967. Right? Mother Rita Marley. Now you're going to move now. After that now, you had Ziggy Marley. Mother Rita Marley. He was born in 1968. So I just one year after Sidella born... <laughs> Rita get pregnant again and had Ziggy Marley like Rita was not resting. Is literally back to back to back. Jesus Christ, the strength of a woman big up Shaggy for right this Sunday. Then now, little time, little pause go on. 
Look at intermission come here, man, now. So then in 1972, in 1972, you then had um, Stephen Marley, right? Stephen Marley. In a 1973, Bob Marley stepped out on Rita and had current Marley. And that mother is Janet Bowen. So once again, may I show you, this has been going, Cindy is literally just the most popular one. The only, she's also the only popular one that ended up being a public figure that just get all of the smoke. But all of these things, Bob Marley did a live for him best life. You get me? So right after that, no, then you have another one named Robbie Marley. His mother is Pat Williams. Jesus, Pim, Bob Marley just said new one, new one, different one. Like Bob Marley was the original. I him should I keep teacher's pet. I write about now that was like different type of girl from all over the world. One fib Jesus Pim. You have Robbie Marley born in 1972. His mother is Pat Williams. Oh Lord. So then now in a 1972, the same year, Bob Marley impregnated another woman, Rita. Mm, Rita did this. I take all of this, you know. This is now Rohan Marley, and he and his mother is Janet Hunt. Bear in mind, we don't really see them woman near them, just staying at the sidelines, and we don't really see them. So we are show you all know when reach re 1972, all know when they read Cindy Breakspear yet. Rita Marley looked like such a pre where I go on now and decided to just go and go do fear her own a thing. So she was playing Blacker and Maka Diamonds Bonim. Okay? And she said, who can play that game? Yes, man. And so um, she had Stephanie Marley, um, right? So now this child was adopted because she should go out and have that for somebody else. So this child was born in 1974, um, Stephanie Marley. Then now, Bob Marley went out again, had Julian Marley in 1975, and their mother is Lucy Powder. So let us show you all. No, we do not reach Cindy. We not reach Cindy. But the public never know them something. So the only person who is visible, everybody just run in pan. Right? Yet again, Kimani Marley. Mom Anita Bell Navis in 1976, one year after that. Jesus, Bob Marley not even a rare five years. Him not itch. Him not that condom did vent. Like this, are our legend, you know, but boy, your boy, man, him did a make hay while the sun shine. Jesus Christ, legend, legend, in and out of the studio. Mm. No, after Kimani Mali, no, two years pass, right? So, remember, you know, right before that, there was a woman called Anita Bell Navy. So, literally, Brita and Bob did done out of them own a thing. You over here, so she over there, so they made them own thing. Them independent. Okay? And then there came now Cindy Breakspear now she, after she won the Miss Universe, uh, the Miss World pageant, they started their relationship hanging out and all of these things. She got pregnant and then she had um, Damian Marley in 1978. Right? Then after that in 1981, Makeda Marley was born and their mother is Yvette Richton. So let me try to get to you is that this type of narrative where Bob and Rita did just so faithful to each other and by themselves and live them good little life and then there came this awful woman who just jump in and kick with them Sunday dinner and mash up them life. That wasn't the reality. That wasn't the reality. Rita at some point just accepted Bob for what it was and decided to just be his support because he required that. Right? And so I like the little the heap of smoke away I give Cindy. Cindy, Cindy I don't, don't like it, man, because the fact of the matter is, is a different situation. Is a, is a different situation. And I like to so come back up, um, what you call it, Barack Obama and Michelle and come in and come, come cause Ellen Powder House. It wasn't that. <laughs> right it wasn't that and at the end of the day in a very twisted fate of event two things i realized i'm actually kind of glad that bob marley was a gallus because the legacy 
that he's left and we are able to see it so evident um, in terms of the talent through his children, through his grandsons. It's almost like in some divine way, it was meant to be. It had to be orchestrated like that for him to just spread him seeds them all over the place. And what is so funny is that the woman who so many people chastise actually brought forth arguably one of the most popular Marleys in terms of music and that is the Damian Jr. Gang Marley and we have to just pre that fact <laughs> and so I just don't know because I am going to have noted that tomorrow morning because I have so many thoughts about it um, but here me just say this. I give the movie a 7.5. I really do. I really am very happy that the movie is doing well at the box office. I would see it again, but I just think that this movie is not for each and every Jamaican because if you are expecting a little bit more Riri and some more of the, the, um, some more moments, I don't think this movie is for that purpose. This movie is to just give insight into the musicality and a little bit of the, Back, back um background st story um background into the love story between Bob and Rita and I guess why she would have sustained and dealt with him with all of the infidelity all over the years. I think this movie was to just give a tail into that. No, if I were to kind of put my spin in the movie, I would definitely want more backstory into the supporting cast in terms of like the establishment of the whalers, in terms of even I would love more talking um moments between Judy Judy Mott um, and the, um, the, the, the eye trees. Um, I'd love to see more there. I'd love to see more about Bob Marley and all of him having all of the kids. I'd love to see that captured in the film. I'd love to see the funeral and all of that. But I do gather that the movie was not based on those years and going into the intricacies of all of that. So I give it a 7.5. And um, I'm very much here for it. Like I actually stayed, I looked at the credits and I felt very proud to see so many Jamaicans represented. And it just like, it just dawned on me like, all we need are the budget. All of these stories can be told. We have all these stories here. But very rarely do we get an opportunity to actually get the funding to tell our stories and to have it look and be on the screens and in the rooms as such. And so if Kingsley and Lashana are the persons who are going to be um, position to really take the Bob Marley name into this current uh, generation and to to really show the global impact of the brand Jamaica, then I'm I'm very much salute salute saluting it and I'm going to support it because what will happen is that the next step that will signal to a lot of Hollywood that they probably should invest and to fund more of our Jamaican stories and then it will eventually get to the point where or local celebrities will be the ones that will be the stars because now they'll be making the connections and having the access to all of these um, producers and Hollywood execs. And so if you haven't seen the film yet, go and go support it just because you're a Jamaican. If you haven't seen the film yet, support it because a lot of Jamaican people were employed and a part of this project. Support it for them. Support the film because it will encourage more, Holly, more of Hollywood to invest in our Jamaican stories, in our Caribbean stories, right? And so this is it for my TED Talk. I have said a lot. Um, yeah, I have said a lot. And my final thing is that a lot of commenters also saying that this movie was really to just kind of show, show up how much suffering um, Rita Marley went through. And I do agree I find out she's a part of the production. I'm just know Rita is like, yeah, man. Everybody talk, Wally Bo Bob, but at times people, people must know how oh, I did have to suffer for so long and how oh, I really all of the man throughout all of these years, okay? And so um, just watch movie for yourself. I really want to tell you everything, but just watch the movie for yourself. And um, you should feel, you should leave there feeling more inspired than you left. That's what I think, okay? Um, but if you never like it, that's, that's also fine. Well, that's it for this video, you know. Oh, God, my review of the Bob Marley One Love movie. Me know, me probably forget for say whole of things, but you can sound off in the comments and let me know phone of feedback as well.
because I'll be scamming through it. Um, so thank you so much for watching the Dutty Berry Show YouTube channel, home of the best pop culture reviews to keep you entertained and informed. Take care until next time when I'll be talking about another trending topic. One love, one. All right, peace out. Jesus. <laughs> this is my message to you.